Hi everybody and welcome to the TensorFlow Cafe at the TensorFlow Developer Summit. I'm Lawrence Moroni and I'm chatting with Patrick Brandt from the Coca-Cola Company. And Patrick, you had a talk here at the summit. Mm -hmm. It seems to be a really interesting one. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us about it? Sure, so I shared um, how TensorFlow is supporting one of our largest, most popular digital marketing programs here in the United States. Okay, yeah. so it's like it's scanning codes from bottle caps. That's right, right that's right. So we've, uh, underneath a lot of the bottle caps and fridge packs and products we sell, we've got unique codes okay. that our consumers can then use to um, enter into promotions and earn and win things. Okay, Yeah. so why TensorFlow? Um, well, the, we started actually early on, uh, and I could recognize about last year actually, and I could recognize that um, TensorFlow had a very, I call it approachable interface, right? Oh, so, oh, thank you. It, uh, you know, it, it presents what would be otherwise very um, complex constructions right. in um, idioms that I think I would say everyday programmers could understand. So you've got modules, you've got objects, you've got classes, you can compose these things to create, you know, like a deep learning graph. Yeah. Um, so uh, it was that, it was the entire, you know, platform really, the documentation, everything, it was, um, it seemed like something that was a, a, you know, a good move for us. Okay. <laughs> so now you did this, so you, you trained it to classify basically the digits that are printed on That's these right. bottle tops. Mm -hmm. and now, I've seen these bottle tops, and sometimes I'm sure the dot matrix printer printing on these things, it's like mm -hmm. sometimes they're skewed, right. sometimes yeah. they're obfuscated. Like That's a, right. How, how did you do all this? Yeah, so um, that was one issue we had had with our caps uh, and, and other codes is that Normal, we'll call it like OCR solutions, right? Okay. Um, they they couldn't handle the fidelity of the caps. So what we did is we created a training set, both synthetic and real world, because we can generate these things, these caps and fridge packs ourselves, um, and really just you know threw it at TensorFlow, and uh, we adjusted our model several times through our development. Um, but we eventually got to something that performs extremely well for us and very well at scale. At that. Wow, okay, so it, when you say it's scaled, so pretty quick? Yeah, it's very fast, you know, it's, uh, we're about you know, one second, it was a, our performance client, one second average processing time, which wow. um, from a user experience perspective is great. You know, it's, it's um, not ruining anyone's expectations when they engage with our platform. Now, you went to TensorFlow to do this because an ML-based platform. Mm -hmm. What would it have been like? What's the difference if you had done this more in more traditional right. programming? Right. So if we had, say, applied a more heuristic model, right, of um, trying to use rules to, to um, interpret these codes. So I could imagine a situation, right, like where we create our model and it works really well for, let's say, zero degree rotation on the cap. Yeah. Users are holding this thing perfectly and they're holding their phone perfectly. The second they twist that thing two degrees in any direction, that heuristic model would fall apart. So you find yourself having to encode all these different variations through heuristics, um, and that sounds arduous. Yeah, so, definitely. So well, Because the cap's circular, you don't really have a frame of reference, mm -hmm. right, to know that it's been rotated. Yeah, I mean, just simple, something simple is a slight t uh, you know, twist on the axis and then a rotation, um, which is very natural for someone holding a cap in their hand to do. Um, so, you know, with a machine learning approach, um, we're able to uh, accommodate that translation invariance with a convolutional neural net. Sure, and I think one of the things I found that, like, it, just to my eye, mm -hmm. that when I look at these digits on the bottle caps, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. right? It's hard yeah. to tell the six from a five or an eight or yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, did you have pretty good success with this? Absolutely. Um, I can say anecdotally that. Yes, I love that the, the the machine eye, uh, if you want to think about it that way, is actually um, often works better than the human eye, uh, right. just for the reasons you were saying that um, to human eye, a lot of the um, visual artifacts that are on these caps with skew and pixel drift can can start to complicate things. But um, our model is trained to look through that. Okay. So, how did you get training data, by the way? Uh, well, we started with a synthetic data set, um, and then. Uh, that that got us a baseline. Um, we actually got, I would say, about 50% accuracy just on synthetic data alone. Okay. And that was um, used for transfer learning, actually. So we created a real, uh, a real world data set, just printing stuff. I mean, okay. you know, we dialed up our printing facilities and we said, hey, give us a bunch. <laughs> and then- um, Just print a whole bunch of- Just caps print a whole bunch of caps, bridge packs, give nice. them to us. And then we distributed those to multiple suppliers. Yeah. Um, and uh, we provided them with some custom built tools that we created to make it easy for them to take a picture and label it. Okay. Um, we 
started moving into a much more assembly line approach. One team would take images and the other team through like a portal would verify the image, enter in the code, make sure the quality of the image itself was good. But we were able to very quickly, within a matter of weeks, generate enough data for wow. us to train the model. That's so cool. Now, you mentioned that there are a number of initiatives you're working on, not yeah. just this one, right? Ah, so that's can, right. Can you share any of the others? I can. Um, so in particular with com computer vision and marketing, um, this code scanning initiative uh, was the beginning of our um, uh, kind of our computer vision platform. Uh, we this year have launched a new uh, digital icon, a okay. visual icon, um, that we're starting to put on the uh, exterior of our packaging. And it, it's a delightful looking, very beautiful um, image and uh, it fits in well with all of our other branded elements, which is critical. Um, but it encodes information for that product. So it's QR code, but not a QR code. It is not a QR code, but <laughs> Uh, it's, 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 principle, it's in principle the same idea. It's just, I would think of it more as like a bespoke QR code, something okay. that um, is appealing from a visual perspective. Interesting. So instead of just lots of black and white squares, it's... Yeah, it's three concentric rings with a little Coke bottle in the middle. I'll have to take a look. I'll have to check it out. So cool. So um, going back to the, the bottle classifier that you have, I'd like to have a play. How would I get started? Step one is buy one of our products. Okay. Um, not all of our brands have these caps uh, printed on them, but, but most of them do, and certainly our core brands, you know, any Coca-Cola product, um, Powerade, et cetera, will as well. Um, but uh, you buy a product, twist off a cap, and you now have everything you need to uh, enter into our promotions. You know, you would create an account on okay. coke.com slash rewards or on the new app that we launched two days ago, Coca-Cola okay. USA app. Um, and the hope is that, you know, it becomes an experience that's rewarding enough to continue engaging with our consumers. Sounds good, I'll have to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. So, Thanks so much, Patrick. Yeah, you're welcome, Lawrence. So uh, thanks everybody for watching this episode. If you've got any questions for me or any questions for Patrick, please just leave them in the comments below. And any of the links that we discussed, I'll put them in the description for this video. And whatever you do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Mm -hmm.